What's up everybody? Timmy and Natu here and today, today, yeah, it's a different, I'm filming in the morning and today we're bringing it back to basics. Alright, so what do I mean by bringing it back to basics? Today we will be talking about the three of what I believe are the most basic things to learn in photography if you're new to this you should learn these three things and when these three things are together it forms the exposure triangle so what are the components what are these three things that i'm talking about it is first the shutter speed the iso and of course the aperture so we will start this off by me explaining to you the shutter speed so what is a shutter speed? Shutter speed is measured in seconds. Is how long it is how long the shutter of your camera stays open or how slowly it stays open and closes to let the light in. So this is measured in seconds. So cameras usually range for 30 second shutter speed to one four thousandths of a second or one eight thousandths of a second shutter speed so what does this mean so the slower your shutter speed like when you shoot like one out uh, one thirtieth of a second up to 30 seconds this will give you motion blur and the significance of the motion blur will depend on how long your shutter is open so when your shutter is open for like 20 30 seconds this is usually the long exposure shots you take this to capture the motion of the water, get it all blurred out to make it look creamy. People use this to take uh, astrophotography. And yeah, so for portraits, usually you would be on the faster side of the shutter speed, wherein you will be shooting at around one, at least one, one twenty-fifth of a second because it won't catch any of those micro movements because even though we think we're being all steady, and shit we're actually having micro movements so i think i believe for me one one twenty fifth of a second and above up to one 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 eight thousandths of a second with a good shutter speed for portraits or for product photography depends really on the look you're trying to achieve so i'm gonna show you sample photos for the shutter speed <laughs> slower ice uh, the slower shutter speed gives you that motion blur and the faster shutter speed captures the motion of the image or the person you're trying to take a picture of all right all right so next up is the ISO so ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor to light so the higher the ISO the more sensitive your sensor is light so your image would be brighter the lower the iso the less sensitive it is to light so it will usually make your image a bit darker but but there is a but to this the higher the iso the more noisy your image so you some cameras when you shoot at above 1000 iso you will really start to introduce noise to your images and it's gonna look all muddy and not good when your ISO is set to the sensitive, uh, I mean the native ISO of your camera, your images will look crispier, it will look better, and no noise will be introduced. So some cameras are capable of shooting up to higher ISOs like the Sony's. They're very good at low light and high ISO performances. Uh, my camera can shoot up to like 10,000 ISO without really introducing that much noise, but I tend to, I try not to do that because it actually makes the post-processing more difficult because when you start moving those dials over at Lightroom, some of the noise will appear. So it's not a good look, it will make your image look muddy and you will lose a lot of that detail when you shoot at the high ISO. So here is a sample of some photos that I took. So in high ISO and low ISO, I'm gonna show you the difference. Okay, so there you go, as you can see, the image is shot on the higher ISO. It's not really looking that good, it's noisy, it's muddy, it's, it's just not a good overall picture. 
But the, on the other hand, the image that was taken with the lower ISO, it's crispier, you get more detail, and it's just generally a nicer image. So, to recap on ISO, the higher the ISO, the more light, but it could introduce noise to your image. The lower the ISO, the less light sensitivity, the crispier your images. All right, I'm going to aperture. So what is aperture? Aperture will determine the depth of field of your images. So it will depend on if you want your subject to be isolated, you want the subject to pop out, or you want a wider depth of field. So when you're, sh if you want a shallower depth of field, you will be shooting at the wider aperture. So aperture is measured in f stops if you notice when you're buying lenses it's like 28 to 70 f 2.8 so that f 2.8 is the aperture and the smaller the number this is when it gets confusing the smaller the number the wider your aperture but the wider the aperture the more shallow the depth of field is so Depth of field will range from 1.4. Some lenses will be at a constant aperture of 1.4 or 1.8 or 2 or 2.8. And some lenses will have a variable aperture. So like the kit lens, so 18 to 50, 18 to 55, 3.5 to 5.6. So at its widest, it will be at 3.5. And it's most on the telephoto end of that, it will be at 5.6. So it will depend on what you are shooting. If you're shooting landscapes, typically you would want a wider, shallow, uh, a wider depth of field. So you will have to pump up your f stops to like f10, f11, f12, f13 to get everything in focus. You will get more details, more features of the images in focus when you shoot at the smaller aperture or slow, smaller f-stop. But when you have it wide open, you're typically gonna get more, uh, you're typically gonna get the subject in focus and everything else will, on the background will be blurry. And this is the world's famous bokeh. It's bokehliciousness. And it will depend on what you're shooting. If you're trying to isolate your subject, it's typically shooting at the wider f-stop. Me, typically, I want to shoot at around 2 to 2.8 if it's like a portrait. Sometimes I go to 1.8, 1.4, depending on what the person wants or the client wants. But when I'm shooting landscapes, I'm typically shooting at f10, f11, f12, f13. I want it to be more focused on more things. So again, I'm going to show you a sample. So this was shot at 1.4. This was shot at eight. So as you can see, the 1.4 has a more blurry background, while the F8 has more things in focus. So to recap, aperture is measured in F stops. The wider the aperture, the more shallow the depth of field is. So the more shallow the depth of field is, the more isolated your subject is, and it will give you that bokeh. And the wider, I mean the smaller the f-stop, the wider the depth of field, you will get more things in focus. So this is good for like family photos, like if there's like 50 of you in the family, you take family photo, you would want every single place to be in focus. So you have to have a smaller aperture. So that's it for the aperture. To recap everything, shutter speed is the length of time that your shutter is open to let in the light. So again, the slower the shutter speed, the more light enters, but it will give you that motion blur. But the, the, faster, the faster the shutter speed is, the less light, but it will give you that crisp, it will capture the motion of the image. It will be able to stop everything on its tracks. The ISO is the sensitivity of your sensor to light. So the higher the ISO, the more light, but the noisier your image gets. The lower the ISO, the less light sensitivity your sensor has. But the crispier your image is, the more detail, you'll get more detail out of it. And last but not the least is the aperture. Aperture is measured again by f-stop, so this is the f2.8. 
and the f 1.4 on your camera this will determine the depth of field remember shallow depth of field blurry background wider depth of field everything is in focus and how will you be able to tell if your image after mixing all these settings up how will you be able to tell if your image is properly exposed usually cameras come with that exposure meter maybe on the screen or sometimes when you look at the viewfinder there's the exposure meter there it will more or less assist you if your exposure is correct but try not to depend on it much trust your instincts trust on how you want the image to look how you want it to be edited so when you shoot at raw you will be able to get more details so even if your image is more blown out or a bit dark you will be able to to manipulate that in post if you shoot in raw because sometimes if you want to get a nice landscape but the sky is really blown out you have to just really have a darker image and revive all those details in post so but it will help to get this to get it as right as possible in camera already because when you're also it will be easier to post process but again that exposure meter sometimes it's not perfect so you have to trust your instincts you really have to practice you really have to get these three things on lock and i'm still trying to get this perfected and still haven't had it perfected try to just mix up all your settings just practice 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 learn how to use your camera be one with your camera so if you feel like to learn something hit the like button if this is the type of content you enjoy hit the subscribe button hit the bell so you are notified every time i have a new video and that it that's it for me see you on the next one and if you're not new to the channel maybe you have noticed you do notice it yes i changed my dark brown curtains to these dope ass blinds i so i have nice blinds i have better lighting in here so it's so good so satisfying to get more light into this room finally so again that's it for me hit the subscribe button if this is something you enjoyed see you on the next one peace out